I set out on a mission today. My goal was to find streaming gear that looked at least semi-professional. Like no bottom of the barrel, $8 super budget stuff in this one. But I'm also not trying to drain my checking account just so I can stream on Twitch for 10 people. As it turns out, that middle ground area has a lot of options. And I'd like to show you the ones that not only give you the best looking stream, but are also easy to use with good features, and most importantly, are a good bang for your buck. Let's jump into it. The biggest challenge of this whole thing is trying not to make this a whole Elgato show. This is the price point that Elgato likes to dominate, that kind of high end of the mid-level budget gear. But don't worry, I dug deep, I found some great competitors, I think you're gonna like everything in these setups today. That being said, we do have to start with the classic trio streamer setup. With these three pieces of gear, you get a good combination of quality, convenience, and price. So let's switch to that setup right now. Here's what we got going on to this setup. For the webcam, we've got the Elgato Face Cam. Not the Face Cam Pro, the regular Face Cam, which is really, it's kind of the only 1080 60 webcam I can really recommend nowadays. There are some other okay 1080p webcams. So when I compare them for the price range, I mean, this thing is $129 brand new or less than $100 if you buy it refurbished on Amazon, at least as of filming this video, I can't seem to find another webcam that handles dynamic range and color as well as this one does. It also comes with the free Elgato Camera Hub software, which gives you a ton of control over the webcam. And I actually had to go in and make some adjustments to get it to to look this good. But that's kind of the advantage of Elgato stuff is they give you a lot of extra control in their custom software that they build for their devices. And so I was actually able to go in and turn down the contrast. This is what it looked like originally. And you can see the dark parts are just a little bit too dark. So as I turned that down, it brought back some of the details in the darker areas. I also manually did my exposure and my white balance. And I've found that turning on automatic white balance for some reason makes you really red. That might just be my webcam or maybe that's all of yours. Going automatic, seems to fix that. For the mic, again, using the really popular Elgato Wave 3 microphone. And this mic is not anything to write home about. It's a good mic. It sounds good. It checks all the boxes. It's got a little capacitive mute button on the top there. But the special thing about this microphone, again, is the free Elgato Wavelink software that comes with it that allows you to control different aspects of your stream completely separately. So I can turn up and down my game volume without messing with my teammate volume, or I can change how loud Discord sounds to me versus how it sounds to my audience totally separately with two different mixes. It's also got a handful of cool little add-ons like I've got here, like the cool shock mount or the pop filter on the front. And this microphone goes for 149 bucks on Amazon, or again, if you wanna get it refurbished on Amazon, I've seen it as low as 118 for either the black or the white version. And then of course, my lights right now are the go-tos for almost all streamers. The Elgato Key Lights. These go for $180 each on Amazon, and you guys know all about these lights. They're good, they're big, they're really well diffused, and you can control the brightness and the bi-color on them. So anywhere from super cool to super orange. But of course, the main draw to these, just like all of them, is the software. You can completely control them directly from your phone or your PC or your stream deck. I mean, I've said it a bunch. Elgato has become kind of the apple of streaming. Not to say that they're always the best, but that they build an ecosystem it's really hard to get out of. I mean, why would I buy this thing if I can buy this thing that works with all my Elgato stuff super easily, you know? But these aren't the only options. In fact, I wouldn't say these are even the best options. Let me show you setup number two that is gonna give you a little bit more flexibility, a few more well, options. Setup number two becomes pretty heavily improved, a significant upgrade over setup number one because of a little thing that we did. The reason streamers often go with an Elgato microphone or an audio interface is because it gives you the Elgato software, the one that we showed in the first setup. The thing is, if you're planning on buying a mid-range setup, chances are you're planning on buying a Stream Deck. And the secret that some of you might know is that if you get a Stream Deck Plus, the one with the dials on the front, it also comes with the Wavelink software. You don't have to have an Elgato mic. And now we can plug in any USB microphone and it functions just like an Elgato microphone. So right now I've got the pod mic USB, which is a fantastic dynamic microphone, which also happens to have an XLR jack if I ever wanted to go to a full audio interface at some point. And I think the thing looks really cool. It's got that, uh, that Batman finish to it. Plus, since it's a dynamic mic, it's going to get rid of some of the keyboard clicks, the mouse clicks, people talking near you and really only hone in on your voice right in front of it. I think the mic sounds great. I've used it before on my stream, but the biggest upgrade to setup number two is you can tell 
the webcam, which is a great segue to our sponsor who is Insta360. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this video. This was a super convenient sponsor because the Insta360 link, the webcam we're using right now, was already going to be in this video. So when Insta360 reached out and they're like, hey, can we sponsor one of your videos? I was like, I've got the perfect one. So let me take a minute and tell you about the features of this camera and why it's become one of the favorite webcams of streamers and content creators. First off, not only is the 4K quality webcam super high quality, you got great dynamic range, great colors, great skin tones. You can see how natural my face looks right now, but also it has three built-in motors, essentially a built-in gimbal. This allows it to do a lot of really cool things. For example, if I give it the hand tracking gesture here, here. Now suddenly, it's going to follow me around the room. So anywhere I go, this thing's going to see me. I can even turn on zoom. I'm doing this in real time, by the way. It's this easy. If I just wanted to track my head, now because it's in 4K, it can punch all the way in and it's still super high quality. This camera is way too stinking cool. Let's turn off the tracking here. You can also create presets, like you can see on the side over here, that allow me to choose preset positions to jump to with hotkeys. So let's make preset one to be the standard setting position. Let's have preset two be over to the side and let's have preset three be a zoom in on my face for, you know, the memes. You can automatically change the orientation of the camera to be vertical if you wanna use it that way on stream like a lot of streamers are doing nowadays. And I can click a single button to switch to desk view for either mouse and keyboard cam or like an unboxing camera. And again, because it's a 4K high quality camera, I can zoom in and out using gestures without losing any quality. And you can now even control all of these features from anywhere using your mobile device with the new remote control function they just added. And then probably one of the best but simplest features, once you're done with OBS, you close it, the webcam's not being used anymore, it automatically looks down and turns off so you know that nobody's watching you through your little webcam. So if you're looking for a high quality webcam that has some really cool features that might bring some fun stuff to your stream, check out the Insta360 link in the link in the description down below. I'll see you over there. And one other thing I did to this setup is something that I see a lot of YouTubers use, but I never see any streamers use it. I got rid of the Elgato key lights and instead I replaced them with aperture lights from their Amaran, their more consumer priced line. These are the P60Xs. And just like the Elgato lights, they're thin panels, they're bicolor, so you can go from more orange to more blue but unlike them, you have a couple extra professional features. They come with an extra diffusion panel, which allows you to get a much larger surface area, even more diffused light on your face. They also come with these really cool grids. And one of the questions I get a lot on stream is how do your lights light you so well without lighting the wall behind you? And it's because these grids focus the light directly on what's in front of them and it stops the light from spilling anywhere else. Now you do give up the convenience of being able to turn them on and off with the stream deck, which is sometimes more important than the light itself, especially when the Elgato key lights are fantastic lights. But if you're looking for something just a little bit further than the Elgato's, these lights are actually 169, $10 cheaper than the Elgato lights. Now these ones don't come with a desk mount like the Elgato ones do. However, you can find those on Amazon for 20 bucks and I will link to everything I'm mentioning here down below. Those will be affiliate links. So if you do end up picking something up, thank you so much, help support the channel. So yeah, trade off on these lights is interesting. You get a larger surface area and more directional with the grid but you lose the convenience of being able to control it with the stream deck. Choice is yours. Now I get it. You're not your average, ordinary, mid-budget streamer. You want you want to be the best of the well, the best of the the best of the mid. The best of the mid. You want to be the best of the mid-tier budget streamers. I got one more setup for you. Let's take a look at that. from setup number two to setup number three isn't so much an upgrade, it's more it's more of a lateral move. They both have their differences, they both have different priorities and features, it just depends on what you're looking for. For example, I changed the webcam from the Insta360 link to the Elgato Facecam Pro. And now the Elgato Facecam Pro is about $50 more at $299. And for that price jump, you go from 4K30 to 4K60. You also get a bit of a wider field of view, you know, so you can see my desk now, and you get a lot of the Elgato features like their Camera Hub software, which which because this camera is 4K60, they've added the ability to digitally punch in and zoom versus the Insta360, which actually physically moves around. So for the webcam, the question is, do I want the 4K60 in the wider field of view or am I okay with the 4K30 and I prefer the cool features that come with the built-in gimbal? The microphone here is very similar. This is the Beacon microphone. It's actually one of my favorite USB microphones and I currently have it at my setup. And just like the previous setup, this is a dynamic mic and when you plug it in, 
lot like Elgato, it comes with a whole suite of mixing software. On top of that, the microphone itself actually has a built-in processor, which allows it to do some really cool effects like EQ, compression, a really cool noise gate that's called an expander. And because the processing is done on the microphone, when you plug in headphones, you can actually hear what that sounds like. Plus a number of other features such as a high impedance headphone jack that allows you to plug in super fancy headphones if you want. And of course, the RGB ring, which is really why you guys are buying this microphone, be honest with me. And while this microphone isn't cheap, it's $280. That's certainly cheaper than getting, let's say a hundred dollar microphone like the pod mic and an XLR interface like the Go XLR, or even the Go XLR mini. Those two things are going to end up totaling $350, $400 versus everything built into one package for $280, which is why I would still consider it like that mid tier budget, even though it's at the high end of the mid-tier budget. And as for the lights, I'm actually using the exact same Amaran lights as setup number two. I think between the Elgato and the Amaran lights, you don't really need too many other options. Those are pretty much gonna fill out the whole space for you. But what do you think? Which one was your favorite setup? Or do you have a piece of gear that maybe I missed in here that you'd love to see in future videos? If you don't have an answer to either one of those, just throw your favorite emoji down in the comments because engagement. And while you're down there, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. If you wanna see the three budget setups that we did a couple weeks ago, go ahead and click this video that's on the screen. And as always, happy streaming.